in October 2018 we went to Japan for a 25 day holiday. We arrived at Melbourne Airport four hours early and right before it was time to leave they cancelled the flight and we couldn't get another one. So with a bit of insistence the AirAsia put us up at the Essendon Fields Hotel. It's a hired hotel and gave us a wonderful room and um, a voucher for a dinner and breakfast and both the dinner and breakfast were nice we ended up spending a little bit more and it was a buffet meal for each sitting and the food was absolutely tremendous if you've got the money to stay at these hotels you've got to do it The next morning was our actual second day of our Japanese holiday. We missed out on one full day, maybe even a day and a half. And they put us on a Qantas flight at 9am in the morning to Japan. And um, they gave us some really good seats. Got to thank AirAsia for going out of the way with this. So we started our 25 day holiday of Japan. And if you pause the video, you'll be able to see the um, day by day progress through Japan itself. We arrived at Narita Airport in Tokyo very late and we caught the fast train from the airport to Uno Station near our hostel. The tickets for the fast train were $42 each and it included a three day pass of the local train in Tokyo. It was a lovely quiet ride from Narita Airport to Uno Station in Tokyo City made the mistake of not buying a sim at the airport and we had to buy one before we walked to the hostel and we were very tired. They gave us a free drink each and then we settled into a shared room at the hostel. Got a reasonably good sleep for a hostel and on day three we started our tour of Tokyo and we used this three day subway pass that we got Three days is not enough and that's the problem of losing a day because of a flight cancellation. We started day three in the Azakusa district and walked across the bridge to the Sky Tree Tower if you want to call it anything. The tower is 600 odd metres tall and was finished in 2010, being the tallest building at the time but of course its true nature is that it's a broadcasting tower it's got a restaurant up top and an observation deck we took a super fast lift up to the observation deck and proceeded to have a bit of a look around It's definitely a tourist attraction you know, and the novelty shop and all the rest of it. And we quickly had a good look around and then moved on to the next attraction. We didn't go into this Shumi bar hall, but we had a good look around the outside of it. Then we headed for the 7th century old city of Azakusa and um, started with the Senso G market area and walk through that. There was a whole heap of these rickshaw tours operating and they're pretty much a novelty and then we noticed some uh, traditionally dressed um, Japanese people heading for the temple. I overheard the rickshaw driver talking about the market and the one thing I did notice was these gift shops are just full of quality uh, gifts and things. in the distance the Senso G temple built in 645 uh, then we walked into the Senso G shrine area proper and um, no 
notice if you pause this you'll read that there's um, shrines and temples somewhere around here you can hire kimonos and here's the five-story pagoda and this building is called the Hosemon Gate with a big lantern somewhere there in the middle then they, you've got the option of lighting incense whether you believe it or not I think that's where you poke it in the fire, the smoking pot fire. Sniff in the smoke, cleanse the spirit. More paper lanterns. There's a close up of them. Very beautiful. There's a girl spinning around with probably a rented kimono dress. Here's the five story pagoda again. Of course, Japan is full of bonsai trees and they're just beautiful. Then there was a lot of these smaller shrines scattered around an ornamental lake or creek. And it was gorgeous in that area itself. And I've forgotten what this one was called. Uh, more of these little small shrines. And they're quite decorative and beautiful. Stone was erected by a surviving soldier of a battle that took place in 1865 of the Endo Shogunate period. And all the warriors that died were buried here to commemorate their death, their struggle, their fight. I don't know how this works. I suppose you put a contribution in and pick one of these things in memory of somebody. I can't remember whether they were inside this Toshogo shrine or not. But there are more of these little temple type things in a walkway. And then you leave that area and walk out into another area. This is called the Demboin building and it has this lovely gold doorway. Photo opportunity. This talks about the story of the eternal flame of the fire that took place in when the Hiroshima bomb went off. It's been kept alight ever since in memory of the hundred thousand people that died at Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Then we walked through the Uno Park area and it included the zoo and a whole heap of museums. Unfortunately, they were all closed. Uh, they had a cyclone earlier on. Here's a muse one of the museums. And uh, we walked around the outside of them and enjoyed what little was available to see before we headed off further into the park itself. center of Uno Park there was a, a street market in amongst all the typical tourist stuff there was some really nice artwork pottery and um, other great looking things that typical Japanese quality and what they produce and make most Japanese dress neat and tidy and then you've got the tourist daggy looking lot we are and the, the Japanese pottery, I love it, how clean and precise, and um, the cane work, more pottery, and I tell you what, the quality was tremendous. Then we reached an area of the Uno Park Lake, the Bintendo Island was wonderful. We, before we got to Bintendo Island, we walked through this gate, and... Um, more shrines, small shrines and such. Then we walked across the causeway to the island itself and some tourist stuff. There was a festival of sorts going on. You can see the, the plant life in the lake. Uh, I'm not sure what the festival was but they'd set up stages and stuff and were about to 
uh, have a presentation while we're walking through these um, wish discs and uh, more paper lanterns uh, above and around the stage so I think it was the paper lantern festival coming up there it was bombed by the United States in 1945 and the Bento Do area was rebuilt on the island including two temples and shrines then you walk through to the, the other side of the island and we walked around the lake walked through the university grounds and park and we arrived at um, the Tokyo City Dome area and walked around the, the dome itself and this is the site of the Giants, the Japanese baseball team and then you can see the Tokyo Dome City Amusement Park we didn't go into the amusement park I'm getting too old for that sort of thing. We caught a subway train back to the Asakusa district and on the subway train we noticed that just like everywhere else in the world everybody's replaced the newspapers with mobile phones and uh, I was exhausted. Been on market building and then through the um, Sensu G shrine area of the dusk or evening and um, didn't stop too long and here's a local with a kimono and we went looking for food and we found our first cheap dinner in a little I've forgotten what they call these little restaurants where you have to pay your money in a machine and uh, pick from a little photograph what you want to eat and then they, the chef serves it up and gives it to you and it was absolutely beautiful food I thoroughly enjoy Japanese food but because we, we had such a long 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 day I was really really tired but I still enjoyed the food then we walked back to the hostel and here's a local tour bus cheap and, uh, across the bridge and it was pretty much uh, the nightlife had started and the people were heading home and uh, you can see just over there is the one of the cruise boats set up for the night's cruising maybe a dinner boat The video was produced by myself and it's the end of another exciting video of our Japanese or Tokyo tour day 1, 2 and 3 October 2018.